Right, so the VXR's back, but I suppose I should start by explaining why it went in the first place. So I was at a car meet in Sheffield not long after the Cadwell track day, which went perfectly to be fair, and the car envelops itself in a cloud of smoke which is not what you want 2,000 miles after an engine rebuild. So I tried not to drive it for about a month, unless like absolutely necessary. Sort of started hunting around for a place that could fit me in. Was waiting for a response from R&D for a couple of weeks and Giz Motorsport reached out. I popped the car over to them for a quick checkup and here's the results. Suspecting that the turbo was the problem because the stem seals had just been done by the engine builder. They first looked at the turbo because that's most likely culprit. I have been using anti-lag on a stock K04, which is a bit dumb, but like I accepted that risk and was willing to replace turbos if it blew turbos. So what I was not expecting was engine trouble on a freshly rebuilt engine. So they found nothing wrong with the turbo. The edges of the blades were a bit jagged from basically being melted by anti-lag, but otherwise all fine. Um, but putting a camera down the bore showed oil pooling at the top of the cylinder. It was clear it was coming from the valves on the inlet side, like running down the back of the valves from the head. They then proceeded to take the inlet manifold off. That was dry, the boost pipes were all dry, so again, nothing wrong with the turbo, and could clearly see oil dripping down the, the back of the valve stems. Little Jane, so she's all stripped down. So majority oil looked like it was coming through the intake side. That oil cooler pipe sort of been installed there. A bit, bit jaunty, so probably why it started leaking. That one's fairly typical with crimps. Uh, oil cooler itself actually looks all right, but if you've got a new one, we'll replace it. So it is a bit hard to see, but you see the uh, oil leading side of the ports are quite glossy. It's all built up a bit, all down the stems, um, and the ports are all, all pretty oily. But it looks like it could just be running down from the stem steels. You can actually see the oil pooled up at the bottom of the stem. So you can even see the uh, the oil ridge line there as such, where it's run down the stem. It's your call, really. We can investigate further, pop the rock cover off, replace the gasket, and see where this oil is coming from. See if it is just a, a stem seal installed incorrectly. So stripping it down further, they found nothing wrong with the stem seals themselves, which basically indicated one valve guides could be the only remaining problem that would leak oil past the valves. So just gone to whip the cams out. They've put sealer just around the edges, which is, is actually even as per Vauxhall instruction. But what happens is that edge where the tab of the sealer is, they should actually have an anaerobic style sealer. Seals underneath, otherwise the oil gets through the crack and then goes down the back of the cover, which looks like it's been doing. It's very easy to rectify, but again, it's noting down anything I find. So I just want to do a, a leak down just while the cam's out so we know nothing's holding the valves open. Leak down's relatively high for a fresh engine. Luckily, this, just to try and confirm the rings, doesn't seem to be really anything coming past the rings, but on the valves on both sides, if I sort of just cap that up with a cap, it's also coming past the valves, so we'll, we'll keep that noted as well. Obviously, they just haven't cut any seats or anything like that. But let's see if there's some stem seals on it. So I've just relieved the valve springs off it. And uh, this, all it is is nothing more than a whistle. So I'm going to put it through. And I'll go on to that side. That one's not as bad. That one is one of the main offenders. So I gave Ash the go-ahead to take the head off and start tearing it down and, and fully rebuild it, basically. But I can't leave anything alone, so while it was apart, I asked Ash to actually port the head. Uh, we couldn't do a CNC port, I'd have been waiting six months or something. But a hand port was possible and did free up some power. So we'll cut back to yesterday when I picked the car up from Ash at Giz Motorsport. So I took the car to a meet in Sheffield, parked up while I ate some food before I left, and it was enveloped in a cloud of smoke just, just after idling for like 10 minutes, which is obviously not something you want after you've just had the engine rebuilt. No, um, not at all. So I was sort of in a panic trying to get it ready for a track day and was asking around where could even fit it in to get checked over because the engine builders said it's probably the turbo because they'd done the stem seals and I thought it was the stem seals and we just wanted to, to figure out what was up like, with we'll, it basically. We'll have a look. So we went into it and thought, you know, I said to, to James about a few things. They uh, did say about when we was anti lag on a care of fours, always a bit dicey, probably he's going to get it a bit hot. Yeah, and I was I was prepared for that yeah, outcome. You, you were prepared, um, so it's like we'll, we'll check it out and see what's going on. 
and so far the, the turbo is actually okay. It's seen some paint, but it's, uh, it's it's alive. It's not actually smoking. And it will continue to see some pain oh, <laughs> with yeah, me it'll driving continue, it. Continue. Yeah. But it's hanging. It's hanging in well. So with it is, we was like, okay, let's look a bit deeper and let's go do a bit of a leak down. Make sure it's nothing really engine related. So after doing the leak down, the bottom end overall, it's, it seems fine. It doesn't seem to be going past the rings or anything. We found a lot of leakage past all the valves. And then as we went into it, it sort of, you know, you said, well, let's let's go for it. Let's make it right. So despite being built, um, it didn't appear to be any of the seats or anything being cut. So we, we, we took it apart. You wanted to go for a point in the cylinder head as well. So we yeah, can't leave anything alone. But like if it needs fixing, no, well, you might as well upgrade there, it. Yeah. So we did that. We said originally about the valve springs, it was only on stock valve springs. So we've gone to just a set of pipers to set, basically got a bit more pressure on there for a bit more boost. So we're not going to get any valve flow. We recut all the seats. I did send you a video you link it in. What's going in? So you see where we've recut the seats, we re shroud them to try and pick up as much flow as we can out of the valve job alone. And then, of course, it's been ported, different valve springs, and we, we try and make them look pretty. It's fairly hidden in there, but it's all all vapor blasted and as, as nice as could be. And just trying to make it right, to be honest. But overall, say so the bottom end was in good health, just head needed a bit of a freshen up, and we've made it right. So hopefully, no, no more issues. The guides were pretty warm, which I think was. When we looked through the stems, there was some oil down the valve stems. Yeah. And where it pulled over is because the guides were fairly worn. It was just pulling over, letting it pass the seal. And you can put stem seals on it forever, but without guides, it's never going to be right. Hopefully, it should all be good. Some toes crossed. The bonus yeah. is we've even squeezed a bit more power out of it. Good morning, James. Ash from Gizmo Sport. Just thought we'd give you a bit of a video on your head. So. It's been vapor blasted now, just give it basically a bit of a better appearance. Then gone through multiple cleaning cycles and onto the ultrasonic. So when we did the leak down before, we had problems with the valves not sealing. They've now all been recut um, to a different profile. We also cut a bit into the chamber just to de-shroud the valves, just gives you a bit better flow. The cracks you see here are honestly very, very common. Uh, probably 90% of the cylinder heads we see have have these cracks. It doesn't actually cause any issues at all. Um, pretty much every every cylinder has has cracked there. We've never seen this have a negative effect, to be honest. So apart from that, we did measure the guides. With the valve seats being a bit worn, the valve will tend to sit in the cylinder at a bit of an angle, and it will constantly pull, and they usually start to wear the guides. Um, from looking at the the valves, these have all been refinished now, so they're all all basically mirror finished but we changed the valve angles to pick up a bit of flow uh, mainly because you know the stock angles are set for economy and all sorts of ways we can actually pick up a bit more flow out of actually moving the uh, the angles around a little bit so as for the port work both sides are now are now ported new stock oe guides fitted and now just the final reassembly with some piper valve springs and some retainer type stem seals and we'll get it put back on. And for the power it was, it's now 318 did you say on, on high boost? Yeah and... so high boost, well we say high, it's still because it's stock care forward but fairly gentle so that's still about 1.5 bar but with it is 1.5 bar, 318 which stock inlet is, is pretty good, it's not that bad at all. So the rest of the car with the intercooler and exhaust, everything you've got made is, is basically all ready for higher power really. So it helped us out massively. Yeah, 318, but quite a lot of torque. So 300 and what are we? 374 foot pounds of torque. So <laughs> yeah, that is wild. So a lot, a lot of torque. Just get a little bit choked up top, and we didn't want to throw too much more boost out of it, just because it's been a stock care for. We want to keep it, keep it alive, so you can have fun with anti lag, flat shift, and give it some more pain. Give it yeah, some more pain and make it fun. That's what it's all about. But no, hopefully she'll be uh, back out and get some track time in it now. It's on. I back sport lines as well now because we found a snapped spring while it was on the ramp. Yeah, yeah while so, it was on, it was a bit of a pre track day prep. We was like, let's just check it around. Yeah. Like, oh, you've, you've got a broken <laughs> spring. You're like, oh, right, okay, it's like prime app option to upgrade. So you can see in there the hint of red from the new I back sport line lowering springs that Ash fitted. Car sits a hell of a lot nicer now. It's like you'd expect from a VXR. <laughs> Before they were kind of stock Astra boaty looking. It, it, they look fine stock, but this just sets it off, in my opinion, perfectly. Uh, the other things Ash sorted for me were oh, see if I can get this open one-handed. So 
I had oil leaking pretty much everywhere within a thousand miles of getting the car back on the engine builder. Like down the back of the block was soaking wet and you can see after a very hard drive we are still bone dry. Some of that was from the oil cooler lines. I did have an item on my invoice from the engine builder for some seals being replaced. So they clearly had a go at, at fixing it and it's just, you know, there was some other problem. I think the lines themselves were split. So I got the Nevlock OE oil cooler and stainless lines, which is the most cost effective way to stop that ever happening again. You can see freshly vapor honed, cleaned cylinder head, which honestly looks too good for this car. And the other thing that Ash fixed was, I don't know if you can see down there, but those two blue banjos, those are actually on double banjo bolts, and that's for the front mounted oil cooler. So instead of the Mocal sandwich plate, which is a thermostatic sandwich plate. We're just going straight off the factory sandwich plate, which is a much more reliable, leak-free way of doing it. And Ash is about to start selling those kits again. So not sponsored by Giz Motorsport, but um, if you have an oil cooler and you want to, or you want an oil cooler and you want to plumb it in properly, that's the way to go. And that's all I can think of, basically. So now the car is back and better than ever, I hope. Um, and <laughs> hopefully a while out until our next after fork out four digits for it. Which, you know, this is the second time in six months. I have got a set of AP Racing brakes at home, waiting to go on it. It'll be a big upgrade from the stock brakes. I'll show you now. If you can see the bluish tint on the disc, that is from cooking them going up and down home moss. Didn't take long at all to glaze the pads and they make a bit of a noise at high speed. I think they're warped as well. So not up to a Nürburgring trip. And the tires are cracked because they're 10 year old Conti Sports that came with the wheels. So they'll be getting replaced with NS2Rs and then hopefully can get off to the Nürburgring in it. It's been reliable so far today. <laughs> I've battered it around the, the back roads and the peaks. So yeah, just praying for more of that basically so I can actually use the car I spent so much money on. So you'll have heard the power it picked up uh, in the, the clip from Ash. Um, honestly, the 500 Newton meters plus of torque is just insane. Um, it feels so different. So low boost now is about the same power it was making on high boost before and high boost is a bit more, but way more aggressive, ramps in so much faster, and just wants to blow the tires off it, it is amazing. Uh, hopefully that changes with NS2s and we can put it down a bit better. But to be honest, these Continentals are not a bad tire, they're just old and a bit dry rotted. So, with all that said, hopefully, back to um, more of the usual track days and hammering it about, and ideally a couple of Europe trips in the next year, might be cool. If you enjoy the content and like, like the updates on the car, then do us a favor, like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm and all that, and I'll see you in the next one.